Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm gonna to show you probably one of the most important skills that you need to learn in your shop, and that's how to sharpen your tools. I'm gonna to show you my method on this. It's not the only method, it's not the overall best method, it's what works for me, so I'm gonna show you that method. We're gonna talk about setting up a brand new chisel. Um, I've got a file chisel is how you pronounce it, I think. Um, we're gonna flatten the back on this brand new chisel and hone a micro bevel. And the same thing on a brand new plane iron, and we're gonna flatten the back using the ruler trick, and then hone a micro bevel on the front. Now this dovetails nicely with the sharpening station from my last video. Um, so I'm gonna be using this sharpening station throughout this entire video. If you haven't seen it, I've got plans and I've got templates available for this, just click the link down below. So let me go ahead and talk to you real briefly about the tools that I'm gonna to be using. I wanna thank today's channel sponsor and that's Bits and Bits Company. Use coupon code SIMPLECO15 to save 15% off your next order. So this is the sharpening station. This is where I keep all of my supplies. To begin, we're gonna be using the Lee Nielsen Honing Guide. More on that later. To flatten the backs, I've actually got two of these. To flatten the backs on both the uh, plain iron as well as the chisel, I've got a coarse DMT diamond plate. That's gonna do all of your rough work with the chisels and the plain iron like I just mentioned. The plus, we're gonna use this to flatten your water stones. And speaking of the water stones, I've got a 1,000 and an 8,000, but when it comes time to flatten the back of the chisels, I do actually have a third stone, and this is a 5,000 grit. Since we're polishing such a large surface, we need something that's gonna go in between the 1,000 and the 8,000, otherwise you're gonna be spending a whole lot longer on the 8,000 grit, so I use a 5,000 grit for that. So I only use the 5,000 grit for flattening the backs of chisels. I do not use it for uh, honing the micro bevels, so the only time I break it out is when I have brand new chisels, essentially. Last item that I forgot to mention, this is a half a millimeter or 19th aisle thick ruler that we use for the Charlesworth ruler trick. Uh, this is one that I got on Amazon that I'll link to below. It's just a real thin ruler. It's about $4 with prime shipping. Um, it's something that you're gonna wanna pick up if you're gonna be using this trick, but more on that later. And this is the chisel that I'm going to be uh, flattening and polishing. So to begin, I'm gonna use my diamond stone. This is a coarse DMT diamond stone. Um, and I use water with a little bit of what they call hone right. Um, this makes the water non-corrosive, so I just spray this on the surface, lay it down flat on the surface, and I like to have about half of the, the chisel on the surface, and do a few swipes. And then I'm gonna move the chisel up so that it's almost to the edge, and do a few swipes. If you keep the chisel in one area and it's a brand new chisel, what you're gonna do is end up cutting a groove in the back of this, and it's not gonna be, you're gonna have a step, in other words. So, do a few passes, about 10, and then slide the chisel up closer to the edge, not on the edge, but probably about a quarter of an inch away from the edge and do a few more passes. And just keep working your chisel back and forth. And now I'm just gonna stop and take a look at it. So just briefly, I was going side to side. So you're gonna see a couple of different scratch patterns. You're gonna see scratch patterns this way, and those are the uh, scratch patterns that came on the chisel. The ones that I put on it are going this way. So as you can see, it flattened it here, here, and up at the tip, but right here it's still polished. So what that means is it's not exactly flat. I'm gonna have to go back on the stone and keep working it until I can see the uh, consistency of the uh, my scratch pattern all the way from at least, you want at least three quarters of an inch in from the tip. Now let me briefly explain something. I've been flattening this for a couple of minutes and I forgot to mention, this hollow right here is perfectly fine if it was flat on either side of it. So in other words, if it had a flat spot here, in other words, if I could see my grit or my scratch pattern on this side of it and this side of it, I would be perfectly fine and I would, I would move on to the finer stones um, because it's just like having a hollow back chisel you know, like a Japanese chisel or whatever. Um, but the reason I'm gonna continue flattening this, let's see if I can get it in there, is because this hollow goes all the way down to this bottom edge. So after a few more minutes, that hollow is completely gone and the scratch pattern from the factory, which was going this way, has been completely replaced with my scratch pattern from this coarse diamond stone. With this done, uh, I'm gonna move on to my 1,000 grit stone to replace the scratch pattern of the coarse with 1,000 grit and then keep moving up the grits. And I'm gonna do this the same way as I did the, uh, the coarse. Just place it on here, holding it the same way putting as many fingers on it as I can and run it around on this a few times and replace that scratch pattern. And you wanna use the whole stone 
After you do one side, rotate it. Keep it wet to evenly wear the stone. After each use, I'm gonna flatten this stone. Just sprayed water on it. Turn the uh, core stone upside down. I mean, as you can see, it's it'll stick once you're starting to flatten it. And you'll know that it's flat when all of your markings are gone and you've got a clean surface. Here's another thing that you can try. If you're really unsure if you're removing the scratch pattern from the previous grit, try to angle your chisel on the, on the, on the grit that you're going to next. So for instance, I went 1,000, I stayed perpendicular. Now on the 5,000, I can angle it and go this way. And when you're done, look at your scratch pattern. And if it's diagonal scratch pattern, that's one way to determine if you've sharpened enough or I guess polished it enough, however you want to look at it. And this is again, the Shapton 8,000 grit water stone. Now the last one, since I went at an angle, I'm gonna go perpendicular again, just so I can track my progress a little easier. But at this point, the back is flat. And I'm just taking it to a high polish. So after about five minutes, I've got a dead flat back that is polished, as you can see from this reflection, hopefully. So now that the back is flat, we no longer have to touch this. If we ever need to do anything with it, all we're gonna do is go to the 8,000 grit stone because after we polish and uh, hone the bevel, we're gonna have a wire edge that we need to remove. So we'll go to the 8,000, just do a few strokes to remove that, and that's all we're ever gonna need to do. Now that we've spent the time to flatten the back, we're not gonna have to do that again. So now we can go ahead and focus on honing the bevel. I use the Lee Nielsen honing guide to sharpen my blades and chisels. And it works fairly well. You stick the chisel in here, for instance, and depending on the amount that it protrudes from the edge of the honing guide determines the angle that it's going to sharpen. Now, on my last video, I showed you how I install these little stop blocks. They're set at a certain distance from the front edge so that when you place your honing guide up on the edge and then stick the, the, the chisel at a certain distance, it's going to, uh, for instance, uh, sharpen at a 25 degree bevel. So what that means is each of these are set a certain distance to correspond with a, an angle. So 20 degree, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50. Just watch my last video um, if you're interested in how to set this up. And plus I sell a couple of little uh, templates or a, a template to help you quickly set these up on your uh, sharpening station. So this is a field chisel. I think I mentioned it earlier. It comes with a 25 degree primary bevel and these actually already have a 30 degree micro bevel on the edge because you don't need to sharpen or polish this entire bevel. You only need to sharpen and polish the very edge. So what, uh, oftentimes what a lot of folks will do is their chisels will come with a 25 degree bevel. They'll actually uh, put a 30 degree micro bevel like this one has on it and it's just gonna make this sharpening process a whole lot faster. Now, before I move forward, this Lee Nielsen Honing Guide, they state on their website, it's made specifically for their tools that may not work with your blades or chisels. Um, one thing that I've noticed with this honing guide, if you have a chisel that has um, the bevel where it tapers in thickness, as you can see, it's thicker right here than down here, you're gonna have problems. It'll hold it in the guide, but you're gonna have problems of it holding it square to the edge, so you may get a skewed bevel. These chisels have a, um, a consistent thickness on the bevel, um, but one thing you can do is you can always put it in there and then take a square and check and make sure that it is perfect in the guide. So I've got this set to 30 degrees and I just did that. Ooh, actually, no, I don't. I need to see, I was talking too much. Got it placed on the 30 degree stop, tighten this by hand and then just take the screwdriver. And since that tiny, that the bevel on the very end, the micro bevel is so super tiny, this is not gonna take any time at all to sharpen. I'll actually do it. I'll do it live. Do it live! So I'm gonna place it on here, and this is the 1000 grit. Six times, feel the back, I've already got a burr. That's an indicator that you've pushed steel over um, and you're ready to move on if you feel a burr on the end. It's as simple as going to the 8000. And I'm probably gonna spend a little bit more time on this just because I'm skipping grits. And 
that's it. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we have the flat back, um, so we're not gonna have to do any more work to that. However, since we just sharpened this, we pushed this steel over, we've got a wire edge on the back. That could fall off while you're using the chisel, but it's probably best to just take it, keep it dead flat, and go one, two, three. I put the macro lens in just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about when I say micro bevel. This is the chisel that we literally just sharpened. As you can see on the very leading edge, that little strip is the micro bevel. There's no need to sharpen this entire bevel. We only need to sharpen just the tip of it. And um, as you can see, if you do a micro bevel, it doesn't take any time at all to, uh, to get this sharp. Just a few strokes on 1,000 and then 8,000 and then you're ready to go. Flattening the back of your plane iron is really simple using the Charlesworth ruler trick. I've got a half a millimeter thick or I believe 19 thou uh, thick ruler. This is just a six inch ruler that I got on uh, Amazon. I'll leave a link to that in the description. It's $4 with prime shipping, you really can't beat it. So essentially what we're gonna do is put a super, super tiny back bevel on the back side of this plane iron. It, you could do this and get away with it using it um, on the plane iron, but you cannot do this on a chisel because again, on a chisel, you need a flat back. So how that works is you're gonna lay your, your uh, ruler on one edge and then lay your uh, plane iron bevel up on the other. And you're gonna stay within about a quarter of an inch of the edge. And you're going to go back and forth after a, about a minute. Actually, not even a minute. I don't know why I said a minute a few strokes, stop and take a look. And what you're going for is the very leading edge is gonna have a, uh, start to get a polish on it from your 1000 grit stone. I don't have it just yet, so I need to keep going. This was kind of awkward, just holding it with one hand and holding the plane iron with your three fingers, pressing down. After a few minutes, you'll see this, this area, if I can get it on there, there we go but you can see it goes all the way across to right to this edge. So that two thirds of one degree back bevel is all we need to do, or that's all that I do uh, to flatten the back of your plain irons, which saves a whole lot of time compared to uh, flattening the back of chisels. I completely forgot to record the next thing and that is to move on to the 8,000 grit using the ruler trick again until you polish the back to a mirror-like surface. This plain iron came with a 25 degree primary bevel and we're gonna put a 30 degree micro bevel just like the chisel. Except the chisel actually came with a micro bevel already on it, which is strange, I've never seen that before. Clamp it, and just like before, this is the 1000 grit. Um, I got a wire edge on the back. That means it's time to move on. So now I'm on the 8000, and I probably didn't show this on the chisel. I put my thumbs on the back, two fingers on the front, each corner, to press down evenly. And you don't need to put a lot of pressure. Now, if you're wanting to do a slight camber, like on a smoother or something, you would put more pressure on one side for a few swipes, put more pressure on the other side for a few swipes, and it's gonna camber the blade just a little bit so that it doesn't leave plane tracks. And that's all it takes. And now this edge is sharp. I'm gonna very lightly remove that wire edge on the back. And that's all it takes. One thing I forgot to show you guys on the chisel is I have a bottle of jojoba oil. Even though the uh, hone right says that it prevents rusting, I still like to wipe everything that touches water. So I'm just gonna wipe the blade and then I'm also gonna wipe that chisel just in case. And that feels pretty good. Full length shaving, and it's awesome. And that is smooth. All right guys, as you can see, my process for sharpening chisels and plain irons is really straightforward and pretty simple. Setting up the new chisels takes the longest because you gotta flatten that, not the entire back, but probably the first three quarters of an inch. But this process makes that relatively simple. So with a coarse stone, a 1000 grit, and an 8000 grit, you can have the same results that I have here. Just practice and really learn how to get this process down. One thing that I wanna cover real quick 
that I didn't in the video is how, you know, sooner or later that primary bevel is going to get smaller and smaller and consumed by that micro bevel. In other words, the micro bevel is going to get, micro bevel rather, is going to get taller and taller and you're going to have to take this back down to that primary bevel of 25 degrees, for instance, on this chisel. So you'd put this in the honing guide, put it back on 25 degrees and use some coarse material such as a, a extra coarse diamond plate, 60 or 80 grit sandpaper, or even Shapton sells a 120 grit water stone. Just something that's coarse that you're going to reset that primary bevel back down to 25 degrees um, just so you're not taking you know, 10 or 15 minutes to sharpen that micro bevel, which is now almost consume that primary bevel. Same thing goes for your plane hours. Just keep an eye on that. If it's taking forever, bring it back down to that primary bevel. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions on this, I've got another YouTube channel where I post some odds and ends videos. And if you have a video, a question that I think deserves to be its own video, I'll post it on that channel. So be sure to subscribe and leave comments down below letting me know what you'd like to see. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel and I will see you in the next build video or shop video or whatever we're calling it these days. See you later.